Hello everybody, this is Dr. Rick coming at you from the Bayou City, better known as H-Town, where it's all about black influence, black excellence, and black consciousness. Brought to you by none other than the black voice. Look, don't miss tomorrow. Make sure you tune in tomorrow where we're gonna break down this entire beef thing between K Dot and uh Drizzy, what's going on, how far it goes back, what's behind it, why it actually matters to hip hop, why it actually matters to black culture, and why I'm talking about it. We know that uh, my my thing is not just being on what's hot not just being on what's sensational. It has to have a teachable component to it. And this one has way more teachable components than you may realize. It's far more than just two cats beefing and going at it. It's more than the nuclear bomb that KDOT dropped. It's so much to it. And I am excited about uh, breaking it down. That's gonna happen tomorrow. But what I'm gonna talk to you about today is I'm gonna bring some clarity to a video I posted about Brian McKnight and his concert in D-Town, Detroit that is, all my people in Dallas. Look, uh, about that being uh, canceled because of the ongoing uh, social media beef he's having with his uh, adult children from his previous marriage. I wanna bring some clarity to it because uh, we tend to view things and decipher things and process and interpret things through the lens of our own experiences and biases. And so we can only see one side. And I want to bring some clarity. My addressing this wasn't because I took a side. My addressing this was going based off of what I knew or what I could perceive in observing this for years. This isn't something new. They've been doing this for a while. And having a knowledge of Brian as far back as the uh, early to mid 90s. Um, coming from a gospel background and a family a record, family in the recording industry, stuff talks, I mean stuff travels, stuff moves also. You, you got to keep in mind that the Odyssey Project and Odyssey Media Group, my current, uh, two of my current ventures all came out of Odyssey Entertainment. So I've been in this thing and doing this thing for some time. But let me tell you something. So I know what Brian was like when Brian was younger. I also know that there are some things that his kids have said about him that don't put him in a positive light. And there are some things that are put out there. And I think a lot of it is from a sense of entitlement. So this isn't about saying Brian is wrong and they're right or they're right and Brian is wrong. This is saying that as a man, that's the way I have to move that's distinct from anybody else outside another man. And what I mean by that is I have 13 kids and I promise you when you've got that many, there's hardly a time there's not at least one of them that's mad at you about something or something isn't going on, the relationship isn't perfect. And they have social media accounts and they decide they want to air it out. Now, I have a sibling who has kids that do it a lot more than mine, but you know, they understand just like I understand. As men, we don't respond online because here's my biggest issue with Brian. Outside of the things that I think that are just absolutely unacceptable, like the things he said, just totally responding to women, his ex, and his seeds, his children, even though they're adult, you're still the father, responding to his responding to a woman and his children like a woman and a child. What I mean by that is I have a responsibility and it sucks sometimes to move in a way that doesn't allow my natural instinct to stand up and swing back, be satisfied. But as a man, there are some things I'm not gonna do. I'm never gonna drag one of my exes ever. You can't say you've ever heard me talk about my ex is bad. You never, you can never say you heard me do anything but speak kindly of them. 
and you have never heard me talk about anything negative about my kids. And it ain't that we don't have our moments ago. I got adult kids. And it ain't that we aren't going through things. It's just simply that my job is still a protector, no matter how old they get. My job is still being a leader and a patriarch of the family, no matter what. And I view my exes as still a part or an extension of my family. And so I will not handle them outside of their scheme. It doesn't matter what they do. My job is to maintain order and to let my character and integrity. Something my grandmother taught me when I was nine years old, I came home from school, I was crying. Uh, some older kids at the school had started a rumor about me and you know, and people were laughing at me and talking about me and I came home crying. And I, I wanted her to tell me what to do about it. And she told me two things. She said, son, Stop trying to defend the truth. The truth doesn't need to be defended. It's like a lion just turn it loose. It'll defend itself. Now I've seen that on memes and everything since then, but this was in what the seventies. So what no memes and nothing out then. So obviously it's a proverb or something the old folks knew or whatever. But she said, "Stop trying to defend the truth. You don't need to defend it." And then she said, "Let me tell you something. I don't care how much of a head start you give a lie." It can't outrun the truth. So don't worry about that. Second of all, stop trying to prove to people who you are. Let the life you live speak for you. Let the integrity of your movement, your operations, how you handle yourself, how you move. Let me tell you something. That's, a, that's some power in kindness. I don't mean be a punk. I don't mean be a simp. I don't mean be stepped on. But sometimes responding to stuff just says you hurt my feelings, so I'm going to push back. It's not that my feelings can't be hurt, but I, as a man, I have to operate within the constructs of managing my emotions versus reacting to them. And I get it. It ain't nothing like having your seed come at you sideways. I get it. It ain't nothing like having somebody that you gave your name to talk to you in a way that feels a little, you know, hey, disrespectful. But let me tell you something. The things that you cannot do because what you got to understand, if you want to be on this platform, if you want to leverage your fame, it comes at a price. You got to understand that this fame thing is two edged. It's beautiful when everything is going your way. It's beautiful when people are loving you, but the same people that will put you up on that pedestal will push it over. And you got to understand that. So you have to move like a man that's measuring his movements. See, that's wisdom. You got to move like a man that says, hey, look, I don't like how I'm being handled. I think I'm being lied on. I think I'm being this. If that's what you feel. But you have to move in a way. Have your PR or people do a press release. But getting on social media live and calling your kids evil and the product of sin. Getting your name changed while you have a junior, a person named after you. Getting your name changed. This isn't something I've got to say, well, who I believe, I don't believe. This come out of your mouth. This is something that can be validated. Getting your name changed, so your middle name changed, so that now you can name your new son a junior when you already have a junior, is, to me, that's not coming from a space of man. Manhood is, you sit up and say, I may not talk to you. My kids know. They know, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm accessible. They can be mad, we can fall out, but I'm accessible as long as you approach me with respect. If you if you approach me with respect, I am 100% accessible, but I demand respect. And if you can't give it, I will simply tell you, hey, you need to find your space because I'm gonna protect mine and we not dealing with each other right now. But the moment that you wanna get this worked out, come back and see me. It's never 100% destroyed, you're mine. You came from me, you're my lineage. I always got you in my heart, but I don't owe you to disrespect me. I don't owe you to mishandle me. So I can sever it and I can say what's on, because what's gonna happen is, come, speaking, speaking from the uh, perspective of a man, what's gonna happen is this. If I'm Brian McKnight and you got his two kids and his ex-wife that if you call their name nine times out of 10, Nobody's going to know except Brian McKnight used to be junior, but Brian changed his name. But OK, so they're out there saying whatever. They don't have the followers that Brian has. They don't have the leverage that Brian has. They don't have the platform or the voice that Brian had. Eventually, if you leave it alone, you let your PR person respond to it once with a press release. 
and then sit up and say, you know what? That's it. That's what happened. That's what's done. Eventually, they're 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 spitboxing with the wind. They're arguing with the wind. They're arguing with a ghost. They're chasing a ghost. And ultimately, people will start to see it as they're bitter. People will start to see it as they're just angry. People will start to see it as because anytime somebody's going at somebody that's not going after them, after a certain time, it's not about telling your story. You've told it. You told it about a hundred times. But when you're constantly going back, you're giving them new fuel that says, I have a right to respond to what he just said. Now you're creating this thing. It's no different than the beef that's going on between Drake and Kendrick. You just keep giving me something to feed off of, and I'm going back in. Well, that's what's happening with them. And now you come out because you're frustrated, because you're angry. And I hope you really don't feel that about your kids. Because even now, here's the, here's the thing. Even if, even if, they were the product of sin, and, and I'm trying to think, I, I'm almost certain you were married when you had those kids. I could be wrong, but even if they were the product of sin religiously, they're the product of your sin, meaning that you're still responsible for them. Let me give you some 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 biblical analogy. When, when David went out with Bathsheba, he didn't get to escape the notion that he stood up and impregnated another man's wife who was out fighting for the kingdom at the time. Matter of fact, the fallout from that relationship with him and Bathsheba did produce the next king, but it also produced a lifelong drama-filled household within Davis. He died with stuff going definitely wrong, stuff that his son had to come along and finally fix after he died. You don't get to sit up and say, because you're a product of sin, I don't have to honor my responsibility as a father. No, you created that. You created it however you created it. And we've got to stand up for that. So when I sit up and say that, let me let me be very clear. What, it, I've been very clear. I thought I was clear in the first video. If this is a bitter mom feeding her kids stuff and doing that, and I've seen that happen. So d don't act like it don't happen, ladies. D don't act like that it's not women out there that's got men fighting to see their kids for no damn reason and everybody's on the father saying he's not fighting hard enough and nobody is challenging the mom saying why in the hell does he have to fight in the first place so that happens and and, and if that's the case she needs to be called out but what i cannot justify on any level is a man changing his name to basically erase one son and give his name again to another son from another relationship as if I've started a new family, the old family doesn't exist. That's not how it works. Yeah, stuff is hard. Being a parent is hard. Being a parent of an adult child is hard. It's not always peaches and cream. It's not always, in this world of entitlement, we'll have kids thinking you owe them stuff you actually don't owe them. And you've got to figure out how to navigate that. As the parent, you've got to lay the foundation. Now, a lot of stuff can be said because I'm pretty sure when Brian was at his peak, he was on the road a lot. There's a lot of absence in that. And that could be perceived and interpreted in a lot of different ways. And it could also be a bunch of different things being basically framed by mom who's there with the kids all the time. Sometimes with kids, it's not about how much money you're providing and what we live and where we live and all this good stuff. Sometimes it's, I need you. I need to see you. I want you. And we are responsible for creating that balance. We are responsible for sitting up and saying, you know what? I'm not going to go on this tour. And that's hard to do because why? We're commodified. Everything is about what we put in the home, what we provide. And so you want this lifestyle, I got to go get it. And we've got to know and be able to read the temperature and the climate of every situation. And nobody's going to get that right 100% of the time. Nobody's going to be perfect across the board. And everybody is going to interpret what you did in a different light. As the man, you've got to manage that. That's what being the leader is. That's what being the head is. That's what being the king is. We don't get to act like everybody else acts. There's a different standard for us. And yeah, it sucks because you want to act out just like they act out. You want to handle them just like they're handling you. 
and then you move in a way that puts you in harm's way that doesn't resolve the conflict and now everybody who's been hurt is arguing from their perspective and I can see the guys that's been through it because I see their answers and their responses in the comment section it's, it's obvious how you view a woman is based on what you've been through with women same thing with m women how you're viewing men is basically how you've been through what you got what everybody's got to understand is what you've been through and what even the people you know have been through is a very small unit of analysis that is nowhere close to the total story and the narrative and you have to you have to be willing to understand that and act accordingly. Uh, be willing to give people the benefit of the doubt. Be willing to look deeper into the framing and the context. Be willing to know the story. So my issue with Brian wasn't that he doesn't have a, a complaint. Uh, and my issue isn't that I don't think that the kids don't have a complaint. I think that the kids came out to settle their complaint or to voice their complaint in a way that as a man, you don't. You simply don't air your family out. And I know it's hard, but I've been there. Now, I'm not as famous, nowhere close as famous as uh, Brian McKnight, but I've had people come on and try to put me on blast. And my whole thing is, I'm, number one is, I don't care enough about what people think to be trying to sit up and go back and forth to look I, I i work every day i go hard every day uh trying to be the best man i can i go hard every day trying to love on my people love on my family do what's right and no i'm not perfect so it is what it is but uh like my grandmother told me when i was nine years old i let the light that i live speak for me you know if you misread it or you you mishear it that's on you and that's what we've got to do man so that's all I have to say on that. But don't miss, drop in, check out tomorrow. We're going to talk about what th this whole K dot uh, Drizzy thing is all about. And I am out of here. Peace.